This is part 34 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss installing and using Bootstrap in our ASP.NET Core application. There are many tools that we could use with Visual Studio to install client-side packages like Bootstrap and jQuery. For example, we could use Bava, NPM, Webpack, etc. However, we are not going to use any of these tools. We'll instead use Library Manager, Libman for short. Library Manager is a lightweight client-side library acquisition tool. It downloads client-side libraries and frameworks from the file system or from a CDN content delivery network. To be able to use Library Manager, we should have Visual Studio 2017 version 15.8 or later. To verify the version of Visual Studio you have, click on the Help menu and then select About Microsoft Visual Studio and the window that appears displays the version of Visual Studio 2017 you have. On my machine, I have 15.9.4. If you have an older version of Visual Studio 2017, you can easily update it. To update Visual Studio version, click on the Help menu and then select this option from the Context menu. Check for Updates. The window that appears displays the current version of Visual Studio you have and the latest version that is available so you can update to it. Notice, on my machine, the current version is 15.9.4 and the latest version is 15.9.9. .9. To update to the latest version, I simply click this update button. But for now, on my machine, I'm going to stick with my current version which is 15.9.4. So let me click cancel. Now, to use Library Manager within Visual Studio, right click on the project node and then select Add Client Side Library. Notice the provider defaults to CDNJS, but we have other options as well. I'm going to stick with the default provider. In the library text box, we search for the client side package or library that we want to install. In our case, we want to install Twitter Bootstrap. Notice as I type, we get IntelliSense as well. And we want to install Twitter Bootstrap, so I'm going to select this. As soon as we select it, we also get the latest version displayed. As of this recording, the latest version of Bootstrap is 4.3.1. Now, for some reason, if you want to install an older version of Bootstrap, simply delete the version number that follows the add symbol. And then as we start to type, for example, let's say we want to install Bootstrap version 3.3.7. As I start to type 3.3, .3, it displays me all the available versions. But let's go ahead and install the latest version as of this recording, which is 4.3.1. Next, we have the option to include all library files or choose specific files. I'm going to include all library files. Finally, we specify the target location, the target folder within our project where we want these clients and library files to be copied. By default, Library Manager is placing these client side libraries within this www root folder. Recollect from our previous videos in this series, only static files that are present in this www root folder are served by default. That's the reason Visual Studio is placing these static files within this folder. And at the moment, these bootstrap files are placed in this folder that is named Twitter-Bootstrap, but I'm going to name it just Bootstrap and then click the install button. Now, when we expand WW root folder, we see lib folder. Within that, we have bootstrap. Within that, we have folders for CSS and JS. When I expand the CSS folder, we see all the bootstrap CSS files. To manage these client-side libraries and packages, Library Manager creates a JSON file and places that within the root project folder. Notice here, we have a file that is named libman.json. This file is called the Library Manager Manifest file. Notice, this file has an entry for Bootstrap client side library that we just installed. We can also directly edit this manifest file to install a client side library instead of using the user interface provided by Library Manager. Now, let's try to install jQuery by editing this manifest file. First, I'm going to make a copy of this block. Notice, as I start to type here, we get IntelliSense as well. And from the IntelliSense, when I select jQuery, the latest version is 3.3.1. Finally, we also need to specify the destination folder where we want these jQuery files to be copied over. Let's name the folder jQuery. Now, pay attention to this lib folder as I save this libman.json file. 
Notice we have a folder with name jQuery created and within that we have the required jQuery library files. Now if we want to clean these library files, simply right click on the libman.json file and then select clean client side libraries. Notice what just happened. The clean operation deleted all the client side library files from the destination folder, but we still have their respective entries within this library manager manifest file. So this means when we right click on libman.json file and select this option restore client side libraries, notice we have lib folder recreated and within that we have bootstrap and jQuery restored. We can also uninstall, upgrade or even downgrade a client-side library just by editing this manifest file. For example, let's say we want to downgrade jQuery to use 3.3.0. Notice as I start to type the version number, we get IntelliSense. And if I want to downgrade it to 3.3.0, simply change the version number and save the manifest file. Notice what just happened. It deleted this jQuery folder and installed version 3.3.0. Now let's say we want to upgrade jQuery again to the latest version. One way to do that is by changing the version number here to the latest version and then save the file. The other option is when I click on this line, notice we have a light bulb. When I click on this light bulb, we have the option to uninstall jQuery completely or check for updates and update to the latest version that is available. At the moment, the latest version is 3.3.1. Now to uninstall jQuery completely, we can select this option or delete this entry from the manifest file. Notice what happens when I save this file. Pay attention to this jQuery folder as I save this file. Notice jQuery is uninstalled and the respective folder is gone. So the point that I'm trying to make is to manage client-side libraries within Visual Studio, we can use the user interface provided by library manager or directly edit this libman.json file. At the moment, this is how the pages within our application look. Let's style them using Bootstrap so they look better. To use Bootstrap within our application, we need to reference this Bootstrap CSS file within our layout view. So I'm going to place it within the head section right here. So simply drag and drop the Bootstrap CSS file into the head section. Next, we can start using the Bootstrap classes. First, I'm going to style our layout view. The first thing that I'm going to do is on this development, I'm going to use Bootstrap Container class. Notice we also have IntelliSense. Since this is ASP.NET Core tutorial, I'm not going to spend time explaining Bootstrap. If you're new to Bootstrap, please check out this Bootstrap tutorial for beginners course. I'll have the link to this course available in the description of this video. Next. Let's style our index view. I'm going to replace this HTML table with another piece of HTML. As you can see, this is straightforward HTML with bootstrap classes for styling. Notice within this HTML, we are using an image that is coming from the images folder within our WW root folder. At the moment, within this folder, we don't have that image. I have this image within this folder right here no image.jpg, I'm going to copy it into our project. Finally, let's also style our details view. I'm going to replace all this HTML here with another piece of HTML. Again, this is straightforward HTML with some bootstrap styling classes. Let's save all our changes and take a look at the browser. First, let's take a look at the details view. Let's reload the web page. With Bootstrap styling in place, the page looks much better now. Notice we have the name of the employee, employee ID, email, department. We also have these three buttons back, edit and delete. At the moment, these buttons doesn't work. We'll fix them in our upcoming videos. Now let's take a look at the index view. There we go. We have our three employees. But notice at the moment for every employee, we are displaying the same image. That's because if we take a look at our index view, notice we have hard coded the same image for every employee. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss how to display the respective employee image instead. Another problem that we have at the moment is these three buttons have different widths. We want them to have the same width. For that, I'm going to add a style sheet specific to our website. I'm going to place it within this CSS folder. So right click on the folder, add new item, search for CSS, 
select style sheet. I'm going to name this style sheet site.css. Now, if we take a look at our index view, notice all the three buttons are using this bootstrap btn class. Now, what I'm going to do is within site.css, include that btn class and override the width to 75 pixels. Finally, we need to reference this custom style sheet within our layout view. Notice now, when we reload this page, all the buttons have the same width. So, Library Manager, Libman for short, is a lightweight client-side library acquisition tool. It downloads client-side libraries and frameworks from the file system or from a content delivery network. To use Library Manager, Visual Studio 2017 version 15.8 or later is required. Libman.json is the Library Manager manifest file. To manage client-side packages, we can either use the UI provided by Library Manager or directly edit the manifest file, that is libman.json file. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.